I consciously release the past and live only in the present. I have moved from a mindset of poverty to a mindset of prosperity. I am solution-minded. Any problem that comes up in life is solvable. I am transformed daily by the renewing of my mind daily. Therefore, every day I look for positive attributes in others, purposefully creating opportunities to empower them, build them up, and pass on words of affirmation, validation, and praise. That way I can continue to enjoy and live an abundant life. So I did shorten it up. How'd you guys like this one compared to last week? Critique it. Yeah. Uh, use, you use your critiquing skills. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Go for I, it. I like this one more than last week's only because um, some of these that as I was reading, like I can like relate to them and it's something I would like feel more that I should say to myself. Okay. Um, last week there were a couple, but like this one really got me. So like I don't know. Last week's was really good too. And I kind of shared it with some other people. That's good. That's I good. made copies and oh, wow. to certain well, people. Okay. So, That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, you know what I just heard? Yeah. I heard something phenomenal. She just said she shared what she learned last week with somebody else. Uh, I think she deserves some extra points. I you. do, too. <laughs> <laughs> We are keeping track. Yeah. Um, we are building or have built a, a reward system into this program. So last week, I, I mean, I was so excited about the class, I forgot to have everybody sign in. But I kind of want to get you to sign in every week so we can keep track of that and then reward you, you know, accordingly. That was awesome. Uh, that's a good quality to have when you're kind of self-motivated. You don't have to wait for somebody to encourage you to do something. You just took it upon yourself to share that. And, and that's good. That's kind of how we constructively critique other people, you know, and share, you know, what we're learning that, that, that that's valuable to us. I have a question. I have a couple people who are interested. They mm -hmm. like poetry and they like need like a family at the moment to bunch a lot. Is it too late for them to register? No. You can bring them. Make sure you bring them next week. Okay. In fact, I'm going to give you my information okay. so they can contact me before next week and I'll kind of talk to them, bring them up to speed so they can come in next week feeling like they're on track with everybody yeah, else. Yeah, it's a handful of them too. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. We can change the room around and make it work. That's okay. fine. That's All fine. Right. Um, how many, I would like to know, did the affirmations on their own during the week? How about you? Did you? No, no, no she didn't. Did you it, think about it at least? How about? I thank you for your honesty, though. Yeah. How about you? No. Did no. you think about it at least? No. Okay, why not? If you didn't do it, why not? Just curious. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Just kind of want to get it. Oh, you forgot. Okay, that's okay. Um, anytime you're like changing a lifestyle that you've been so used to for it, it takes some time so i mean it's okay we're not dinging you i just kind of wonder why why didn't you go just curious i just left it in my backpack okay um would it be easier for some of you all if i gave these <coughs> to you electronically i know some of you are walking around with smartphones that way you can you know <laughs> okay I just I just thought I would you know give that as an option, um, or hang it in, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like the first thing. And in case you didn't know, hanging things like this anywhere kind of does fill the atmosphere with the words that are on the page. Believe it or not, and you kind of are conscious of that as every time you see it and you pass by it. I mean, you might not stand there and read it word for word, but it kind of hits you in your face and reminds you of kind of what you should be doing, or it kind of keeps you on track. Um, I love doing stuff like this. When I find things like this, hanging them up, or putting them around the house. Um, I have affirmations around the house that I've even forgotten where I put them. But for whatever I was dealing with at the time, I kind of wanted to fill the atmosphere with those positives that I needed as I was, you know, coming in and out. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, I would even suggest uh, if you hang it up or if you put it somewhere visible, um, highlight a couple of the ones that stand out most to you. 
so that when you walk past it, you just so happen to notice it if it's on the fridge or if it's on your bedroom door. If you highlight it and you, you know, you look at it, and as the weeks progress and as you get better and you grow more, then you'll be able to continue to highlight some more. I, I like that idea. May I? May I? Yeah. Just interject, just a very quick thought. Have you ever seen the rice experiment with words? The experiment with rice? Just a regular rice. I need to find that video and let you see it. Because if I, and you can do this at home if you want to just test it for yourself. Okay, but words have power. Words have power. So I have one container, three containers with rice. I have one container, I put a label on it, the word is love. Right, second container, I put the word hate. Third container, I put a neutral word like, okay. The amount of time, you know the experiment? Oh, you, you, you were nodding your head, okay. The amount of time that the rice takes to spoil, the bacteria start to grow in it. The one, which one do you think spoils the fastest? Eight. 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 It happens every single time you try. Words have power, okay? Yeah, the one that's okay, second. The one that's uh, love lasted the longest. Words have energy, words have power. Not just the spoken word, the written word. So when she's asking you, how do you want it? This is awesome, you want it on paper. Because if the visual impact on that is not only what you see and you record mentally, remember how she told you last week about the subconscious mind? All that stuff, as you're passing by day to day, is going right into your subconscious and driving how you behave. Mm -hmm. So I want you to catch the power of the words. All right, and you can play on. We talked about messaging last week. We talked about how much you just one word, fantastic. How all those thoughts come around. Positive words, use them, live them, breathe them, express them, use them in any way you can. Because words have power. So which words you choose to use? will determine how the world sees you. Mm -hmm. They have power. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so well, did you kind of, well, we've kind of been talking about it, but as you can tell, con positive, constructive co critique is the ability to evaluate or analyze and then be able to give feedback in a way that doesn't attack or demean or belittle. And that's the difference between positive, constructive critique and just flat out criticism. Constructive, uh, positive critique is really a good thing. It helps us grow. It helps us to see some things about ourselves or about our work that we may not necessarily realize, but that an onlooker could you know, pull out right away. And if they come to us in the right way, we can appreciate that feedback and then incorporate it and from that we can learn and grow. But if it comes in a completely different way, it could tend to shut you down and then go in a completely different direction from what it should be intended to do. Um, so I want to challenge you on something. <laughs> because with critique, sometimes, oh, with critique sometimes is, uh, knowing a person. Now you may not necessarily know a stranger that you, you know, walk up to in the grocery store. Or you may not even necessarily know some of the people that you attend school with or go to class with. Usually the critique that means the most to us comes from like our friends, I mean our parents, or our siblings, or our best friends. And sometimes they know us and sometimes they don't. You ever been, even with your own parents, you feel like these are the people that birthed you, but they don't really know you. Like you kind of suffer in silence <laughs> because you're frustrated about some things that you just, should, you feel like it should be obvious to them, but it's really not. And then the, the way they kind of like interact with you, maybe for them, they're trying to interact in a way that gives you what you need, but they don't realize that they're not speaking your language. Has anyone ever heard of the term love language? Did you, have you read that book by Gary Chapman, but you've heard the term love language? Did you know that everybody has a love language? I, I, 
and I don't mean like in a perverted way necessarily. There are several different types of love. You, you know, you have the agape love. You know, you have the arrows, and then you know you have um, that that brotherly kind of love. I, I'm talking about kind of like that brotherly kind of love. Everybody has a love language, and you may not even know what it is for yourself. You just know this is what I like. This is how I like for people to treat me. How uh, how I like for people to respond to me, but you don't really know how to express that in a way that they can understand. I mean, you feel like you're speaking Spanish and they're understanding you in French. It can be frustrating. So today I am going to help you find your love language. I have just a little, a little quiz here. It's two pages. <laughs> and, yeah. You guys are learning a lot of stuff. And this will help you. Yes. Language was something that was discovered and introduced by a gentleman named Gary Chapman. Gary Chapman has written several books. He's a, a pastor, a, a counselor. Um, you know, he works with uh, building or rebuilding uh, relationships. And down through the years of working with various people, he discovered that there was a language that each person speaks. And sometimes that language is silent. It, you, you know, it's not really expressed in a way that the person that you're trying to get to understand you can understand. And then sometimes you don't even know it to the degree that you can explain it to them. So he developed this system on how to find what your love language is, what it means, and what will cause you to respond a lot more favorably than a person doing what they think you need. Because I think that's one of the worst things that a person cares and they're really trying to respond to you in a way that they think you need them to respond and the whole time they're missing the mark. And I think that's uh, a lot of what happens with the breakdown in relationships amongst teens and their parents. It's just a lack of, of understanding on both parts. So I'll give you a few minutes. Um, <coughs> Uh, to answer these questions, if they're very short, and then you can see how to score it at the bottom, and it will tell you your love language, and then I will explain what they are to you for the different ones. You can start. <laughs> 